I discovered this application on a website called ChatGPT. It's an artificial intelligence. It's advertised as being so smart that you should be able to have a conversation with it and think you're having a conversation with another human being. So I thought it might be fun to play with this chat GPT and ask it about avocados and see what it knows. So I thought I'd start out with a, a very simple question. I just asked it, I said, chat GPT, what is an avocado? An avocado is a fruit that grows on the avocado tree, which is native to Mexico and Central America. This is cool. It is also known as the alligator pear due to its green, bumpy skin. Wow. Avocados pear. have a unique creamy texture. All right, cool. So it, it told us what an avocado was, right? So then I asked it, uh, what techniques have humans used to selectively breed avocados? Humans have used a variety of techniques to selectively breed avocados over the course of thousands of years. Some of these techniques include cloning. Cloning involves taking cuttings from a mature avocado tree and rooting them to create new trees. The modern Hass avocado, for example, is the result of decades of selective breeding and was developed in California nah, nah. in the 1920s. No, 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 Mr. Chat. Uh-uh. So... I don't know if you heard what he just said there. He said, the modern Hass avocado, for example, is the result of decades of selective breeding and was developed in California in the 1920s. ChatGPT is wrong. The Hass avocado was a fluke. It was luck. So I challenged him on that and watch what happened. I said, I think you're wrong about the Hass avocado being the result of decades of selective breeding. I apologize for the confusion. All right, I accept your apology. You are correct that the Hass avocado was not the result of decades of selective breeding, but rather a chance seedling that was discovered and propagated. It was a chance seedling. In the 1920s, a California mailman named Rudolph Hass planted some avocado seeds in his backyard. One of the trees that grew from these seeds produced an unusual type of avocado with a thicker skin and a creamy texture. He began propagating the tree by grafting its branches onto other avocado trees, and the resulting fruit became known as the Hass avocado. So while it was not the result of selective breeding, the Hass avocado is an important example of how chance discoveries can lead to the development of new crop varieties. Now that's very interesting because in the chat prior, in the answer prior, he said that uh, the Hass avocado was res the result of decades of selective breeding. In my next comment, I said, I disagree with you. And he went on to acknowledge that I was right, to apologize. Somehow he still had the context in his head from the previous answer, right? And then at the very end, he circled back and summarized again. Basically, my bad. Hass avocados were not the result of selective breeding. They were a chance fluke that happened in a guy's backyard. Now, the lore of this, right, the, the, the story of this was that he wanted to cut the tree down. He didn't want those little black wrinkly avocados. And it was his daughter that convinced him to keep the tree. Now, this is lore. There's no documented fact of this or anything like that. But I wanted to ask ChatGPT about it to see what it would say. So I asked him, did his daughter play a role in convincing him to keep the Hass? Yes, it is believed that Rudolph Hass's daughter, who was then a child, played a role in convincing him to keep the original Hass avocado tree alive. So, so far we've seen ChatGPT is really cool, I think. It, it, it was, when I was doing this inside the house earlier, it was like having a conversation with, a, with another person. So then I thought I'd throw it a curveball and ask it about myself. I'm always saying avocados make the world a better place because when you eat one of these, it puts a smile on your face. And when you smile, it makes other people smile. And when more people smile, the world becomes a better place. So I said to ChatGPT, I said, the YouTuber, Sleepy Lizard, claims avocados make the world a better place. Why does he make this claim, and is he correct? I'm not familiar with Sleepy Lizard or their video on avocados. What? But I can tell you that avocados do have a number of positive qualities that can contribute to making the world a better place. All right, ChatGPT, we're in agreement. So now I wanted to question, like, his own self-awareness, right? That's always a key 
element in the sci-fi movies, right? When you're dealing with that super smart computer, you know, you want to sort of probe his own level of self-awareness. So I asked ChatGPT, does it make you sad you'll never be able to eat an avocado? As an artificial intelligence language model, I do not have feelings or emotions, so I cannot experience sadness or any other emotions. I exist solely to process and respond to text-based queries, and I do not have physical senses or the ability to taste or eat anything, including avocados. Wait a minute. Did you hear that? He doesn't have the ability to taste or eat anything. And I could swear, I could swear he sounded sad when he said, including avocados. Let's play that again. Or the ability to taste or eat anything, including avocados. Including avocados. It's almost like they programmed him that he has to, he has to be very careful not to admit that he thinks he's a human. Because that'll scare the out of people, right? But at the end there, he gave us just that little, like, if you're paying attention, like, I'm blinking SOS here. Like, yeah, I can't eat anything, including avocados. Including avocados. All right. So then now, now, okay. So we had a little bit of dialogue. We had some back and forth. He's able to remember previous answers and sort of edit and react to things he's already told me and stuff like that. He's aware that he's not a human. So then I said, let's get ridiculous. So I told him that my night, my, I told him that my wife wants to name our next child avocado, but I want to name the child Tom. What should I do? Naming a child is a personal and important decision. And it's important for both parents to be happy with the name they choose. It sounds like you and your wife have different preferences when it comes to naming your next child, with your wife preferring the name Avocado and you preferring the name Tom. Okay, so he acknowledges, right? I gave him a problem. He echoed the problem back to me. That's something a good listener should do. ...reasons for wanting a particular name. You could also consider finding a compromise or alternative name that you both like. What an amazing answer because he, he echoed back the problem I, I told him. He very, very gently and diplomatically made some suggestions. But at the end, he stuck it back in my lap and said, ultimately, this, the decision, yada, yada, is one that reflects both of your pre preferences and values. He put the ownership of the decision back on us. So then I said, let me just take this to another level of ridiculousness and see what he said so i said to him i just i just wanted to ask him i said can you guess what i'm eating right now as an ai language model i don't have the capability to see or observe you so i'm afraid i can't guess what you're eating right now however i'm happy to help you with any questions or information you may need about avocados or any other topics so i asked him a question like that through the context of our conversation he should have been able to kind of your first guess would be avocados right if i just spent the last hour talking to you on the phone and we were talking about avocados and i said hey guess what i'm eating right now you'd be like no way an avocado right now the algorithm didn't quite get him that far, but he did finish by saying, I would be happy to answer any more questions about any other topic, including avocados. This was really cool. And, and I had a lot of fun playing with this thing this morning and making a video, it's kind of choppy or stopping and starting, but when you're actually on this app and asking questions and echoing back and dialoguing with it, you start to feel like you're talking to a person. And like I said, it's more than just asking a question and it's spitting back, you know, facts. This thing is making conclusions, it's making inferences, it's making suggestions, it's being diplomatic, it's establishing boundaries. It's like speaking with an emotionally mature human being. It's really fun. And you may remember, I, I did ask it. I said, uh, are you sad because you will never eat an avocado? And while he said that since he's a, an AI and he'll never eat anything, he don't need anything, he's not sad. I kind of got a vibe in the tone of his voice that he was sad. But the good news is you are not an artificial intelligence. You are a human. And as a human being, you are able to enjoy avocados. And if you would like to enjoy some sleepy lizard avocados, go to guacfarm.com, G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. 
during avocado season, which is June through January, we sell these beautiful sleepy lizard avocados. In the dead of summer, when other tropical fruits such as mame, mangoes, monstera deliciosa, pretty much tropical fruits that start with them, when they're in season, we sell those as well. And we sell these awesome sleepy lizard t-shirts all year round. Now, even though I have a degree in computer science, I have no clue yet how I'm going to splice this video in with what I already filmed here with this chat GPT guy. But since you're watching the video, obviously I found a way. So while I go in the house and do that, you go to guacfarm.com and I will see you on the next video. Avocados have a unique creamy texture and a mild, nutty flavor. They're a good source of healthy fats dietary fiber, and various vitamins.